Hi, fourth graders. This is Ms. Kovarik, and we are on lesson 10 of unit 6. Um, for this lesson, we're going to talk about some new characters that are going to be introduced, and we're going to continue talking about that theme of aspiration. So here's your vocab. Barely is an adverb, which means only just. So if you're barely 10 years old, you just turned 10 years old. Cinnamon is a noun, and that is a kind of spice. Porcelain is a noun, and that is china, which is like really nice dishes, um, and they have kind of veins in them, which kind of look like if you have, if you're kind of older, you might have those type of veiny hands. Um, when you get older, your veins kind of pop out more, so they're talking about porcelain, which is those veins popping out of your hands. Satin is a noun, and that is a smooth, shiny fabric. And then selfish is an adjective, which means you're only thinking about yourself. All right, so we're reading vignette seven today, which is called The Three Sisters. They came with the wind that blows in August, thin as a spider web and barely noticed. Three who did not seem to be related to anything but the moon. One with laughter like tin and one with eyes of a cat and one with hands like porcelain. The ants, the three sisters, las comadres, they said. The baby died, Lucian's Rachel's sister. One night a dog cried, and the next day a yellow bird flew in through an open window. Before the week was over, the baby's fever was worse. Then Jesus came and took the baby with him far away. That's what my mo their mother said. Then the visitors came in and out of the little house. It was hard to keep the floors clean. Anybody who had ever wondered what color the walls were came and came to look at that little thumb of a human in a box like candy. I had never seen the dead before, not for real, not in somebody's living room for people to kiss and bless themselves and light a candle for, not in a house. It seemed strange. They must, they must have known the sisters. They had the power and could sense what was. They said, come here, and gave me a stick of gum. They smelled like Kleenex or the inside of a satin handbag, and then I didn't feel afraid. What's your name? The cat I one asked. Esperanza, I said. Esperanza, the old blue-veined one, repeated in a high, thin voice. Esperanza. A good, good name. My knees hurt, the one with the funny laugh complained. Tomorrow it will rain. Yes, tomorrow, they said. How do you know, I asked. We know. Look at her hands, Cat I said. And they turned them over and over as if they were looking for something. She's special. Yes, she'll go very far. Yes, yes. Hmm. Make a wish. A wish? Yes, make a wish. What do you want? Anything, I said. Well, why not? I closed my eyes. Did you wish already? Yes, I said. Well, that's all there is to it. It'll come true. How do you know? I asked. We know. We know. Esperanza, the one with marble hands, called me aside. Esperanza. She held my face with her blue-veined hands and looked and looked at me. A long silence. When you leave, you must remember always to come back, she said. What? When you leave, you must remember to come back for the others. A circle, understand? You will always be Esperanza. You will always be Mango Street. You can't erase what you know. You can't forget who you are. Then I didn't know what to say. It was as if she could read my mind, as if she knew what I had wished for, and I felt ashamed for having made such a selfish wish. You must remember to come back for the ones who cannot leave as easily as you. You will remember? She asked as if she was telling me. Yes, yes, I said, a little confused. Good, she said, rubbing my hands. Good. That's all. You can go. I got up to join Lucy and Rachel, who, will, who were already outside waiting by the door. Wondering what I was doing, talking to three old ladies who smelled like cinnamon. I didn't understand everything they had told me. I turned around. They smiled and waved in their smoky way. Then I didn't see them, not once or twice or ever again. 
Okay, that was an interesting vignette. So remember, we're not reading the entire story, so parts of it are being left out. So this part here about a baby dying, we didn't really read too much about that, but um, it sets the scene that they are at a funeral of some sort, and that is when those three sisters come in. Notice how they're described. They're not given names. They're described as the cat-eyed one, um, the one with hands like porcelain, and then the one with laughter like tin. They give Esperanza a wish, and it's obvious that she wishes to leave, to go somewhere else, because they tell her that if you leave, you need to come back for the others. She calls it a circle. She says, you will always be Mango Street. You have to come back. So we've got one, two, three sisters. How are they described? So I kind of just told you, but go back into the text. How do they describe those three sisters? And then why are we not given their names? Why do you think the author did that? It says, for each quote, list which sister is speaking. So you're going to have to go back into the text and figure out who's speaking because they don't tell you. So when they say, what's your name? Look for the clues. Which sister is speaking, or is it all three? When they say Esperanza, a good name, who is speaking? My knees hurt. Tomorrow it will rain. Yes, tomorrow. We know. And look at our hands. So you're going to go back into the text, and you're going to find each quote. So, for example, let me find one for you. Right here, we know. Right here, tomorrow it will rain. My knees hurt. So they're all in there. You just have to go back and find which sister is being described. So look for those um, words, the cat-eyed one, the one with hands like porcelain, and the one with laughter like tin. All right, that is it for reading. Let's head over to skills. So here is an excerpt from that vignette we just read. It says, what do you think Esperanza's wish was? Find clues in the text to support your answer. So she's telling her, you need to come back for the others. You will always be Mango Street. You can't erase what you know. And then she says, it was as if she could read her mind, if she knew what she had wished for. And she called it a selfish wish. So what do you think Esperanza wished for when the sisters told her to make a wish? Number two, which sister says a circle, understand? So same as the reading activities, um, find the text that I'm talking about, a circle, understand, and look for which sister you think it is. It's in here somewhere, so look for the clues. What do you think she means by a circle? So the shape, a circle. She says, you must come back. So what does that mean? How is that kind of like a circle? Think about the shape. All right, and your last part, it says, in lesson five, you began a story of aspiration. You will continue that story today. Um, so you're going to introduce your character to new people who may be from the same community or somewhere else. Those new people should make your character consider his or her aspirations in a new way. So you're going to click this Google form, and you're going to click on view score so you can see what you typed for the beginning of the story. And then here's a couple questions about how you're going to plan your next chapter. So first of all, who's your main character? What are, who are we talking about? What new character did you decide they're going to meet? And then this is where your next chapter is going to go. So it has to be at least three sentences, um, preferably more, but at least three. And here's some prompts to help you write. So talk about where they met. Talk about what this new character looks like. Talk about what they say to your character. How does your character respond? And then remember, this new character is supposed to make your main character think about what they dream for. Think about what their aspirations are. So think about how can that person either change their mind or help them go more towards reaching their goal. All right? Remember, this is creative, so it's your story. Do with it what you'd like. Just make sure that you follow the correct prompts. As always, if you need help, get on Zoom. We would love to help you. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Goodbye, fourth grade.